Oh, nice, Hannah. All right. Hello. Welcome, everybody. My name is Marnie Hernandez. Welcome to our certificate workshop for today. We're doing Canada. Glad that you can join us. Do we have any brand new agents on today joining us for the first time? Welcome. Um, so if you're brand new, what we do here is we do these certificates to learn, learn about the different exciting um, vendors that we have, exciting destinations. Um, so again, to help you sell to your clients, okay? So it looks like we got a lot of new agents, so welcome. Um, so it's a fun thing that we do, and it's fun that we do it together because it's their tests, some tests you have to take. And it's like, ah, what do I do? You know, so when we have 35 or 80 or 60 people on, it's nice that we have help, right? And we have a lot of amazing agents on here that are very helpful. Um, and that will help answer questions, help you get certified and stuff. Another thing is, um, uh, <clears throat> you know, once you're done, um, yeah, no worries, Amanda, stay on board. Again, it's very easy to get registered. So again, let me give you the link to register. It's right here. So here's the link to register. Click on there, you're gonna register. You're gonna put Archer Travel. They're out of California and you're gonna put your information. Again, only put what's required for right now. You can always update your list. And once you get registered with some of these, you know, then it's like automatic, okay? Usually you just have to register once and then you can jump back into any of these programs. Okay. I, yep. I got registered or I, I, um, I did that and okay. I got the email to verify and I'm trying to verify my email, but it just takes me to a white screen. All right. Maybe just get out and go back in again. Um, and maybe you should be able to, to jump, jump back, jump in. Maybe it already accepted you. So Try that because I know sometimes it does that. And see if that works. I do know that when you when you go in, it's going to um ask you to like accept cookies or something like that. So you may just have to like up uh, accept all. Like there's a big screen that pops up and it's it's all related to the cookies. So you just want to accept all. Okay, I've been like selecting just the selection <laughs> yeah do do all and and then it should let you in um so again if you're new what happens is a lot of people will either follow along on their phone and then do the test online with us a lot of people do split screens so what happens is i will read or we'll watch videos and then after each like course then it has us take a test okay so again what you know as you're getting registered now don't worry just listen and then when we get to the test, as I said, we will wait and make sure everybody is logged in and ready to go for the test. Okay, we want to make sure everybody passes. This link I've just put in there is where I'm at. You would go to learn or training and it'll pop up there. Okay. And um, yeah, nobody gets left behind. Exactly, Hannah. I love your beach picture today. So were you at the beach or are you there now? That's what's a, a great guys. You no, can we just yeah. uh, went for like 20 minutes this morning. My husband and I dropped the kids off at school. Then we just drove down because it's like not even 10 minutes from the house. Wow. And so we just drove down and sat for like 20 minutes and came <laughs> home. Nice. And where are you at? I am in Freeport, Texas now. Texas. Okay. Very nice. Yeah. She had posted a beautiful picture of the ocean today. So um like I said, guys, it's it's an amazing industry. If you're brand new with us, please, please, please don't get overwhelmed. Stay on top, you know, and, and keep plugging in. I've been with the company almost seven years. I was able to, I'm a single mom with four kids, and I was able to fire my boss after a 30-year career in insurance, okay? Um, Mar Mariah, what this is is just a fun course that we do. We do these um, every, uh, I do it four times a week. It's just to help you learn about different destinations. Let's say you want to, you're planning a trip to Canada. You want to learn where to go, what to see, or you want to focus and, and you have a lot of Canadian people or whatever. Um, then you get your certificate and you post on your social media. Hey guys, I'm now a Canada specialist. I can book these amazing trips for you. Check out you know, these vibrant cities in Canada. Check out you know, these wide open spaces. You know, 
don't forget about the visiting these restaurants or for you adventurers. Oh my gosh, look at what we can do for you. Okay. So again, it's just information because what we are, we're researchers. We, Ms. we go ahead. Ms. Hernandez. Yes. Do, do you put Archer or do you put Evo you, for you the put Archer? Archer. Archer. Always, always Archer. Remember evolution's the marketing side. Okay. Bravo. So Archer. Yeah. Thank Archer. you. You're welcome. Archer is our travel agency. You always want to be affiliated with Archer Travel because they're 70 years in the business. Okay. Evolution is the marketing side. Okay. The profit sharing side that stays over on that side. That's the optional program. Anything to do with travel, it's Archer. All right. Perfect. All right, Mariah, did that help you? So again, it's just a fun course that we do to learn about different destinations, learn about different vendors, and then you can post that on social media to let them know that, look, I can book this for you. Look at this wildlife that's in Canada. Anybody want to go skiing? Canada is an amazing place to go, okay? So again, we'll share that with you. So it's just to get the knowledge and to have more resources, okay? All right. And then sometimes your money in your pocket or steps to success require you to get some certifications. Here you'll be a specialist in Canada. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, if you're still signing up, don't worry. Just listen. We will make sure once we get to the test that everybody is registered and signed up and we will get going. All right. Welcome, welcome. So Let's in, educate, engage, and become an expert. Complete these essential model, modules to earn bronze status, okay? So let me just tell you really quick, share our passion. So you learn, retain, promote, and sell. So some of these are long training. Some of them are short. Some we get done in half hour, 20 minutes. And the sun, um, yes, this is to be certified with Canada, correct. But some are like five days worth, okay? So this looks like it could be a long one, but again, let's have fun and learn. And if you need to catch up on a recording, you can do that, but why not do it together, okay? All right, let's get started. So welcome to Canada. So starts off with a video. Oops, let me share my, hold on. There we In go. a place you thought you knew, it becomes more than you ever expected. You can just be you, and that's all you need to be. And no matter what, you always fit in. Where the sights are as beautiful as the people, where the wildlife can get pretty wild. And even though you're not from around here, when you say goodbye, it's like saying bye to family. That's when you know it's more than traveling, more than a vacation. It's a journey, and it's just beginning. And it will continue long after you've returned home. Make sure you accept the cookies, Samsung, okay? Accept the cookies and maybe go back out and then just click this link and see if it'll pop up for you. Okay, sorry. Okay, uh, and next. All right, so now did I miss anything else on that video? No, it's just the video, okay. All right, oops, there we go. Okay, so if somebody can watch the chat box, that would be great, and let me get started here. All right, so Bay of Fundy, uh, Burnt Coat Head Park in Nova Scotia. My daughter's actually in Canada right now. She was going um, kayaking. My uh, stepson is there. All right, for a country. That's at Eastern Canada. Which I one? thought that the next one was Eastern Canada. Um, I don't know. I think we're just doing it. Uh, we're just doing. Mine didn't. My next one was Wide Open Spaces. Okay, all we're doing is welcome to Down Canada. Here. Okay. Then, oh, okay. I just I clicked, this. Yeah, I just clicked here, welcome to Canada. We're just getting started. So this is the first one that I started. Yeah. California, Mariah. Here. 
is the next one. Yeah, if you're doing wide open spaces, I usually do welcome Canada and I go to vibrant and then wide open in history. So we're starting right here to welcome. Oh, then we're going to do the whole thing, maybe. Yeah, we, we do the whole thing. We have to do the whole thing to get right. But the but you have two parts to this in the, the we sheet. Have, right, we actually have probably four or five. If you look, we have to get through all these. So we've scheduled yeah. it for four. Well, that's the whole country. Okay, then you don't. Oh, that's what you're saying. Okay, yeah. you're not doing it by east and west. We're do, we're starting with the program. This is the foundation. We're starting yeah. with that. Then we're moving down here to the experience to get our silver status. And then we move down here to provinces to earn our gold status. So that's how this program works. Okay. I think the trouble is when you you played the thing, I didn't. So mine didn't go there. Oh, you okay. went over. Oh, I got yeah, it. That's, yeah, that's right. Usually, like I said, some people will follow along on their phone and play the thing so you can get to the test. Yes. Okay. okay. Perfect. All right, everybody good? All right, so we watched the video. So now for the country as vast and diverse as Canada, our warm and welcoming nature is without a doubt the unifying thread that weaves our provinces and three territories together. Oh, sorry. Yeah, please. Okay, hold on. Let me do this. Sorry. Okay. In fact, it seems we have a global reputation for being nice, and it all begins with friendly greeting we provide to visitors from coast to coast, buzzing cities to indigenous communities, to a stunning diversity of natural wonders. Our incredible tapestry of history, culture, and geogra geography creates a singular experience for every traveler. While the diversity of our land and people is our strength, the sheer breadth of experiences can be a bit overwhelming to sell. So we've created this unique mobile learning and sales platform to help you not only learn what's nice about Canada, but also to help you promote and sell Canada from anywhere and from any device. Again, this is going to teach you what to provide to your clients to get them excited about their trips, okay? All right, your mobile learning and sales companion. Think of this platform as your friend in selling Canada. It will teach you everything you need to know about becoming a certified Canadian specialist from the essentials on arrivals, transportation, accommodation, and visitor information to a virtual tour of our vibrant cities and wide open spaces. Once you've completed this foundation level, it's time to dig deeper into the many experiences your clients have when visiting us. Whether they're interested in whale watching or wine tasting, catching a hockey game or cruising the falls, hiking unspoiled trails or heli, um, heli skiing from remote mountaintops, watching the Northern Lights or whitewater rafting in our capital, they'll find it all in Canada. We're excited to have you as part of our team Canada in selling our beautiful country. And we can't wait to welcome your clients back. Now let's get started on our Canadian adventure by taking a quick tour through the 13 provinces and territories that make up our great land. And again, pay attention because there's test questions, okay? All right, so first we're going to start with British Columbia, Seton Lake, Lilia uh, Daniel Ernst. Okay, so let's begin on the west coast in British Columbia where majestic mountains and picturesque valleys meet lush rainforest for this um, and wind struck Pacific Ocean beaches, painting a stunning background for a thriving urban life to coexist perfectly with world class wineries and wilderness lodges. Uh, one of the many crystal clear jade hued lakes. OK, beautiful lake there. OK. And then you have tap to enlarge the map of British Columbia You can check that out. Okay, so you have that. Okay, video. Let's check this video out. So my favorite destination in Canada is the Okanagan Valley, which is situated halfway between the Rockies and uh, Vancouver. I love it because of the variety you get. It's a destination for all seasons. You can ski, you can sunbathe, temperatures up to 30 degrees in the summer, great vineyards, great food great activities, golf, sailing, 
masses of outdoor space and really friendly people. All right. Okay, so at a glance, beaches and towering trees surround gleaming skyscrapers, skyscrapers and hip neighborhoods in Vancouver's bustling downtown core, where the culinary landscape offers a tasty menu of fresh seafood, craft breweries, and eclectic food trucks. At the southern tip of Vancouver Island sits Victoria, British Columbia's capital city, brimming with West Coast history, grand yet intimate. Victoria is home to the ancient indigenous culture of the Coast Sal Salish people, North America's second oldest Chinatown and the famed Inner Harbor. The Great Bear Rainforest is the largest tract of unspoiled temper temperate rainforest on earth. This natural wonder sits on the northeast coast of British Columbia and is a diverse ecosystem home to three species of bears and countless other land and marine animals. Tap the video on the right to see why the valley's one of the advisor's favorite Canadian destinations. All right, so we did that. All right, first test question. Okay, so is everybody ready? Um, if not, we will put the answer in the chat box, okay? So the largest uh, tract of unspoiled temperature, temperate rainforest on earth is found on the northeast coast of British Columbia. What is it called? The Great Bear Rainforest. The Great Bear Rainforest. rainforest. Very good. Great job. That is correct. All right. So see how easy it is, guys? very easy again we work together so if you're still registering don't worry um dominique has put the answer in there for you okay congratulations let's move forward now we're going to learn about alberta elk grazing at the foot of the rockies uh robin um, is the one who did this picture very beautiful okay all right hold on a moment there we go all right, so Alberta is home to the world famous Rocky Mountain towns of Banff, Lake Lewis and Jasper with their postcard perfect lakes and valleys, but there's a lot more to explore in this province like the vast prairie grasslands where bison roam, the lively and welcoming cities of Calgary and Edmonton, and fascinating fossils found in the Badlands. Three Isle Lake here, beautiful, and tap to and get an enlarged uh, map of Alberta. All right, and then at a glance, uh, Mariah, again, what you do, yeah, follow along and then you'll take the test. So a lot of people will follow on their phone and take the test online or they have a split screen, okay? So yeah, follow I'm, along, go ahead. I'm like stuck on the main um, screen where it says Canada. Make sure, um, yeah, make sure to watch the videos um, because a lot of times, um, if you don't watch the video or, or click on certain things, it won't let you move forward. So again, click here and then just follow the steps, you know, each page, just click, click, click next and it should take you to where we're at. Click where, I'm sorry. Um, in the chat box, mm -hmm. that's the okay. link we're on. Click there and then um hopefully you know if it doesn't take you to this page or whatever if you're on one of the prior pages just keep tabbing over okay okay thank you you're welcome and again you know guys ask the questions especially if you're new we want to make sure you follow along okay and you get your test taken because we want to make sure you guys get your certificates okay all right, so um, there's a lot more to explore in the province and prairie grassland, bison roam, the li li lively and welcoming cities of Calgary and Edmonton. All right, so at a glance, nestled at the base of the Canadian Rockies, Calgary boasts a frontier attitude with historic neighborhoods, a distinct artistic vibe with modern art centers and live music districts, uh, avant-garde architecture and a culinary offering to tempt all tastes. Edmonton is Canada's northernmost metropolis, metropolis, sorry, situated in the prairie heart, heartland of Alberta. The best way to experience this urban playground is by bike, foot, skate, or Segway. Made all um, the more enjoyable with a pit stop in the vibrant ice district. Follow the massive footsteps of dinosaurs in the, dinosaurs in the Canadian Badlands. 
home of truly remarkable rock formations and fossil beds, and trace the history of the indigenous people who've lived here for thousands of years. Tap that video icon on the right to check out some of the fantastic fossils and rock formation clients can discover in Alberta. So again, if you can't move forward, it's because you have to click up here, okay? So watch the little links and then you have to play that to be able to move forward. Is everybody else stopping or is it just my internet? Okay, good. Because they're doing work here at the at the building and I want to make sure that it's not just us. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right, so next, oops, don't want to do that here. All right, next. All right, Saskatchewan. All right, Moose Mountain Provincial Park. All right, look how beautiful that is with the rainbow, beautiful. All right, so moving east, we find Saskatchewan, which it's sprawling with its sprawling prairie land and 100,000 glistening lakes and rivers. There's a unique spirit and charm that weave their way through the province, evidenced by local hospitality and countless ways to enjoy its bountiful and natural elements. So here, how about going canoeing in one of the Saskatchewan, sorry, many rivers, and then you can download the map or make it bigger. At a glance, again, guys, this is the ways to kind of save and, and understand what's available there, right? So from both banks of the South Saskatchewan River, the quaint city of Saskatoon, again, I apologize for pronunciation, spreads east and west in walkable neighborhoods dotted with artisan, artisanal shops and restaurants that showcase cool collectibles and creative culinary delights. Small town intimacy meets big city excitement in Regina, home of beloved sports teams and their fervent fans, Wascana Park, one of Canada's largest urban parks and at the city's popular outdoor music festivals, whether in summer, sun or winter snow. With so many lakes and rivers, Saskatchewan offers some of the best freshwater fishing in the world. Again, that's something you can promote, okay? Um, anglers will find a watery wonderland full of trophy catches like the northern pike, wall walleye, and lake trout. Okay, so you got fishermen out there, let them know. You can set them up there. All right, what province is home to the Canadian Badlands where dinosaur-loving clients can find fossils and incredible rock formations? So we have British Columbia, Alberta, or Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan. Oh, no. Nope. Alberta, nope. I think it is. Is it Alberta? It's Alberta. Okay. So everybody get that right? Don't want to leave anybody behind. Good. All right. Next, Manitoba. So this is the pathway of the voyagers. Again, look at that sunset. East of Saskatchewan, Manitoba is another shimmering wonderland of lakes and rivers surrounded by, oops, let me see, good, 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 perfect. All right, surrounded by a raw, unspoiled wilderness, beckoning adventure and exploration, a place to see polar bears and beluga whales or reel in a massive fish. So here, polar bears playing in Northern Manitoba. How cool is that? At a glance, you have Winnipeg. Canada's original boomtown and a historic railway hub is a contemporary and thriving center for arts and culture, including attractions ranging from the Canadian Museum for Human Rights to the world's largest collection of modern Intuit art to the trendy exchange district, bursting with hip boutiques and eateries. Explorers will head straight for northern Manitoba and its diverse habitat for incredible animals and marine life which are best witnessed on an Arctic safari. 
how cool would that be, right? With over, and we'll learn about that, okay? With over 100,000 lakes, numerous rivers and creeks, as well as 30 different fish species, angling opportunities are as convenient as Man in Manitoba as they are endless. All right, another video. So my advice for somebody starting to sell Canada for the first time would be, don't try to cram too much into an itinerary. It's a very big country start small and they can clients can always go back a second third fourth fifth time if they want to uh, i always avoid one night stays in fly drive trips because i think it's too rushed um, driving is easy if clients are worried about driving encourage them to drive it's wide open spaces roads aren't a problem uh, and explore routes away, away from the the well-trodden ones try and get get off the beaten track a little bit. Uh, add a city stay at the end of a trip. That's always good adding in. And on the East Coast, use via rail. If people don't want to drive, you can use the train to get away around all the cities, which is an ideal way to travel. All right. Do, 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 do. Oops, sorry, I hit next. I hit the exit. So my advice for okay. somebody starting to sell Canada for the first time would Sorry, be guys. don't try to cram too much into an itinerary. It's a very big I hit country. The wrong Start Hold small on and they can clients can always go back a second, third, fourth, fifth time if they want to. Uh, I always avoid one night stays in fly drive trips because I think it's too rushed. Um, driving is easy. If clients are worried about driving, encourage them to drive. It's wide open spaces roads aren't a problem uh, and explore routes away, away from the the well-trodden ones try and get get off the beaten track a little bit uh, add a city stay at the end of a trip that's always good adding in and on the east coast use via rail if people don't want to drive you can use the train to get away around all the cities which is an ideal way to travel all right so hit next, not the arrow. <laughs> All right, Ontario. How about Niagara Falls? OMG, still need to see that. Ontario stretches from the tip of Lake Erie in the south to the remote saltwater shores of the Hudson Bay in the north. This vast and beautiful landscape features over 250,000 freshwater lakes and waterways and borders four of North America's five Great Lakes. A nature's paradise anchored by the vibrant metropolises of Toronto and Ottawa. So you have Ottawa, the capital here, and then enlarge the map if you want to see that. At a glance, Toronto is the beating heart of Canadian urban life. A world-class city, there's nothing visitors can't find here. From incredible restaurants and shopping districts to museums, galleries, sports, and performing arts. Ottawa is our nation's capital and this dynamic city doesn't disappoint with so much to see and do, especially outdoors on the waterfront, on the riverfront, enjoying a craft brew or meandering along more than 500 miles of recreational pathways weaving throughout the city. Outside of the major cities, Ontario is full of historical small town main streets with inviting local shops and restaurants, as well as beautiful countrysides punctuated by thundering waterfalls, thick forests, and rolling vine covered hills. So Ottawa, a dynamic river city with robust outdoor life is the capital of Canada. In what province is it located? Ontario. Ontario, that is correct. Great job, okay. Everybody good? Yes, yes. Perfect. How about Quebec again? Wow, beautiful scenery, picture perfect, right? Canyon St. Anne. So old world charm abounds in Quebec through the magical streets of Montreal and Quebec City along the mighty St. Lawrence River. But Canada's largest province holds much more in store with Northern Lights in the far North, quaint villages in the Eastern townships, popular ski mountains and dramatic falls. All right. Um, Fairmont, La Chateau, Frontenac, I hope that's right, Quebec City, 
um, at a glance, a mix of European culture and new world cool. Montreal shines with in inventive gastronomy, iconic music and art, trend-setting fashion, spectacular events, and an overall zest for enjoying life. Quebec City is a centerpiece of French culture and history, embraced by centuries-old fortifications and a charming historic district. A UNESCO World Heritage Site of ramparts, churches, terrace restaurants, and well-trod cobblestone streets, uh, Montmorency Falls is located mere minutes from Quebec City. This monumental waterway is actually one and a half times higher than Niagara Falls, making it a can't miss site when in Quebec. Okay, did you guys know that? I did not. The largest province in Canada and a hub of French culture, cuisine, and history is. Anybody? I believe it's Quebec. Let's type that in. Quebec. Correct. Very good. Okay, everybody get that? Quebec. Next, the video. Walk on the ocean floor, the Hopewell Rocks. Outdoor adventure awaits in the seafaring province of New Brunswick at the incredible Bay of Fundy, home of the world's largest um, tides. Whales take center stage. In fact, 12 species of whales live off the coast in the Gulf of St. Lawrence. Okay, sorry, I got somebody calling me on training now okay all right so again the bay of fundy look beautiful pictures on the northeastern coast of new brunswick the red white and blue flags of acadia well, let me send her this do, 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 do. here we go send. all right uh proudly fly a colony of new france that settled on the north american coast during the 17th 18th centuries the descendants of the colonists are welcoming and eager to share their French roots, language, and culture with visitors. Lobster fishing is the heartbeat of many of New Brunswick's coastal communities, providing treats for the taste buds as visitors explore the fabulous beaches and quaint villages. Hey, there. All right, next, Nova Scotia, Lewisburg Lighthouse. Are they almost done? Okay. Okay, ADT wanted to know. I told him to head over anytime after one. All right, East Coast culture comes alive in Nova Scotia where surfing, there's plates up there. Um, and sea kayaking, stunning cliffside trails, world-class golf and vineyard visits are among the many adventures available throughout the beautiful Atlantic province. Sunset in Halifax, and then enlarge the, cop the picture of the map. Halifax is Nova Scotia's city by the sea, surrounded by nature as diverse as its people. What else, where else can you hit the beach for swimming, surfing, trek a coastal hiking trail, take in around a seaside gulf, paddle calm inlets and around islands, ride the tidal bore or overnight at a cottage on the beach, all within city limits. With rugged green mountains jutting up out of the Atlantic, Cape Breton Island and the oops, Cliff Hugging Cabot Trail are jaw dropping, must sees in Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia is home to some of the first vineyards in North America, dating back to the 1600s. Vineyard visits here not only please the palate, but also soothe the soul with their bu bucolic beauty. <laughs> All right, how about Prince Edward Island? Another beautiful lighthouse. How cool is that with a little house attached? 
For the smallest province in Canada, Prince Edward Island holds a lot to see and do, including unique red sand beaches, incredible seafood, stunning golf courses, and verdant, beautiful countryside. The setting for the wildly popular novel Anne of Green Gables. Does anybody see that or read that? All right, Tranquility Cove, Georgetown. The map at a glance, cultural landmarks, great shopping and dining and beautiful golf courses are just a few Charlottetown highlights. Plus there's an array of colorful small towns dotted over the island that are easy to explore on an island road trip. With 25 golf courses packed on to, to um, Prince Ed, Edward Island, offering incredible vistas, beautiful coastal weather and challenging links, it's no surprise this tiny province is Canada's number one golf destination. Prince Edward Island is often called Canada's food island and for good reason due to its abundance of fresh seafood and world famous potatoes created and devoured by people passionate about their food. So Cape Breton Island and the cliff hugging Cabot Trail are jaw dropping must sees in which Atlantic province? Is it the Prince Edward Island? Nova Scotia. Nova, Nova Scotia. Scotia. Thank you. Yeah. Nice job. Very good. Glad I got help. <laughs> All right. You have the eastern edge of North America, Newfoundland and Labrador. Next, we come to um, most easterly point um, of, of North America, Newfoundland and Labrador. Perched on one of the four corners of the world, this province is a natural wonderland where miles of untouched coastline meet sweeping barrens, thick boreal forests, and ancient rock formations. Breaching whales and majestic icebergs are just a couple of the awe-inspiring sights found here. So this is Quirpon Island. At a glance, St. John's, the capital of the province, one of the oldest cities in North America at 500 years old, Rainbow colored buildings scatter up the rocky hillsides in the historic town set on the very edge of the province with nothing but endless Atlantic Ocean stretching to the east. Home to three natural parks and one national park reserve, Newfoundland and Labrador also boast 18 wilderness and eco ecological reserves as well as breathtaking botanical gardens. Newfoundland and Newfoundland, I'm sorry, and Labrador enjoys a, reput a reputation for being friendly, funny, and inviting with locals known for their natural creativity, unique language, and knack for storytelling. Then you have the territories. Okay, this is Nahani National Park Reserve. In the Yukon, Wild Adventures is the name of the game with awe-inspiring wide open spaces, iconic wilderness parks, and a brilliant sky lit either by the Northern Lights or the Midnight Sun. This Northwestern territory has a rich history, not only as the center of the gold rush, but also as a home to thriving indigenous culture. At a glance, White Horse, otherwise known as Wilderness City, has long been a beacon in the far North from prospectors in the bygone gold rush era to the modern day treasure hunters searching for the Northern Lights and a jackpot of natural wonder. Many of the significant gold rush locations and artifacts have been preserved as national historic sites, including Discovery Claim, the very point where gold was found in 1896, kicking off the entire rush. A Northern adventure wouldn't be complete without a dog sled ride and a chance to feel the raw power and speed of canines following a tradition of generations past. Tap the video on the page to learn more about the Yukon area. Next. Oops, sorry. 
All right, Northwest Territories, from the magic of the Northern Lights to the thrilling whitewater rapids, incredible lakes, and breathtaking rugged mountains, the, territory, the Northwest Territories is a spectacular playground for outdoor adventures. At a glance, capital city Yellowknife has been dubbed the Aurora Capital of North America, but the entire territory provides unrivaled opportunities to see the skies explode with red, blues, and greens. Has anybody seen the Northern Lights? Definitely on my bucket list, right? Great Slave Lake is the deepest lake in North America and the 10th biggest lake in the world, offering boating, kayaking, fishing in the warmer months and the opportunity to snowmobile across the lake the rest of the year. Look at that, how scary or cool, right? The rapids are calling at Nahani National Park Reserve, where the Nahani River rushes through, passing through four large canyons, which can reach close to 4,000 feet uh, one um, in depth. All right, Nunavut. Nunavut, North, northernmost inhabited place in the world, the true north. Visitors can immerse themselves in the Inuit way of life here with arts and crafts, music and performance art, hunting and fishing and dog sledding. At a glance, due to its far northern location, much of Nunavut experiences extremely short days between October and February with only a few hours of daylight. All the better for more viewing time of the magical northern lights. In contrast, during summer months, the day seems to stretch on forever with the midnight sun. Brings as many as 21 hours of continuous sunlight in the capital city, Iqaluit, and nearly a full day of sun in more northern communities. The biggest island in Canada and fifth largest in the world Baffin Island is a grand wild landscape, the spectacular homeland of the Inuit and welcoming Arctic playground for the adventurous. All right, which Northern Territory is known for its role in the gold rush? Yukon. The Yukon, very good, that's right. Woo -woo. Let's continue. All right, how do we get to Canada? All right, so flying into Canada and between the provinces and territories is simple and efficient. With more than 100 airports and well-known airlines like Air Canada and WestJet, plus numerous regional carriers. So you have the largest international airports listed here, okay? So you guys can like read through them, get the information about the different airports, where they're located. Um, Adjacent areas for the most up to date about Canadian airport security, you can click there. And just so you guys know, because you're new, when they have things like this, you can click on here and a lot of people will save binders or folders online and stuff to be able to help you remember or keep track of things. So as you see here, this takes you into a whole separate area where you can save that information for later. Okay. And then up here also this information shows you time zones. Again, something that you may want to need for later, right? All right, so time zones, six time zones being used across Canada. On the right for a handy reference to keep them in mind when planning arrivals and departures. And then entry into Canada, travel to Canada may be different than you remember as there are new measures in place to help keep everyone safe. We encourage you to make sure you have the latest information about pre-entry and on-arrival requirements for the latest information on Travel to Canada, including updated requirements and restrictions. Visit the Government of Canada website. So just so you know, and again, you've heard a lot of restrictions are now being lifted and stuff, but it's always great to find out the most up-to-date information before booking or sending your clients out of the country, okay? So make sure you do that. All right, next, getting around. So how about driving through the Canadian Rockies? Planes, trains, and automobiles are only a few of the ways for your clients to get around Canada. Here's an um, overview of traditional modes of transport available. And remember, you can incorporate some distinctly Canadian options too, like dog sledding or hella hiking, for instance. Okay, that would be kind of fun, right? Send your client on a dog sled. 
So road tripping, Canadians def definitely love the open road and with so many scenic byways stretching over the nation, traveling by motorbike, car, truck, or RV is an amazing way to see the country. Car rental companies are found at most airports and in towns and cities, including Budget, Discount, Hertz, National, Enterprise, and Thrifty, among others. Renting an RV is a great way to travel across the countryside. RVs come in all shapes and sizes, from travel trailers to motorhomes to park models. But one thing's for sure, they provide a comfy home base for getting up close and personal with the natural wonders of Canada. So you have spray lakes here. Beautiful, right? Okay. And then here, riding around St. Lawrence River, taking the train, okay? Romance on the rails is alive and well in Canada. And with these three rail companies, it's easy to see why train travel is one of the most loved or loved ways to see the country. Uh, Rocky Mountaineer off offers four, and we've done Rocky Mountaineer. That's in our training already in um, my YouTube channel. Offers four unforgettable rail routes, including their most popular first passage to the west, linking Vancouver and Banff Lake Louise through Canadian Rockies. In addition to stunning mountain views, the gourmet service is in, in the custom-designed gold leaf dome coach is extraordinary. Okay? Extraordinary. <laughs> Send clients on a spectacular cross-country journey on Via Rails, the Can Canadian, where the ride goes from Toronto through gentle prairie fields, rugged lake country, and picturesque towns to the snowy peaks of the majestic Rockies, ending in Vancouver. Travelers can venture back in time on a fleet of fully restored vintage Canadian past Pacific Railway carriages with Royal Canadian Pacific. One of the world's finest luxury train operators offering custom crafted journeys through the Canadian Rockies. Then you have public transit. Most Canadian cities have public transit systems. Buses um, account for most of the fleet, but many major cities also have subways, metros, or light rapid transit services, including Vancouver, which is the SkyTrain, Calgary, the C Train, Edmonton, LRT. Toronto, the subway, Ottawa, O-Train, and Montreal, Metro. So accessibility for details about accessible transportation in Canada and links to resources for travelers with special needs, please visit Accessible Travel website. So again, you can click here and it'll take you into more details for your client helping them out, okay? All right, next. All right, and then accommodations. Is there more of that? Okay, uh, With our diversity of beautiful landscapes as well as modern and natural attractions, visitors to Canada will find um, countless options for rest and relaxation and full immersion. Wherever you choose to book your client's accommodations, rest assured you'll be enhancing their vacation in memorable ways. Internationally known hotel companies certainly have their presence in our urban centers and most visited destinations. But when looking for more off the beaten path accommodations, here are some suggestions. How about some cabins, lodges, cottages, and more? Ranging from rustic wilderness cabins to an indulgent lakeside cottages to luxe ski and ski out chalets, these accommodations exude the Canadian experience in every way. Take, for example, the Blatchford Lake Lodge, just outside of Yellowknife in the Northwest Territories with self-contained log cabins and cozy guest rooms, including the one Will and Kate stayed in during their royal tour of Canada. It's the ideal base for a Canadian winter adventure. Working ranches with acres and acres of rolling prairie lands and cattle that need branding, roping, and herding. Our working ranches provide a perfect way to fulfill cowpoke dreams. Guests can find their home on the range, herd cattle, cook over an open fire at places like La Riata Ranch in Saskatchewan and Sierra West Ranch in Alberta. Glamping under the stars, again, cool things. We found this out like with the safaris and stuff. Definitely beautiful place. Um, and right here, glamping in the Canadian forest. So look at that. 
So it's like, you know, camping, but glamorous, okay? Um, with only 20% of our country inhabited, there's plenty of space to pitch a tent by sparkling alpine lake, thick pine scented forest, hoodoo rock formations, or on a quiet stretch of beach. For clients looking to escape to the wilderness but maintain a luxury touch, there are glamping getaways available from coast to coast in yurts, domes, tipis, canvas tents, and more. And then you have unique retreats, no shortage of unique and sometimes quirky retreat ideas in Canada. For those clients who like to chill on their city break, book a few nights at Quebec City Inimitable, sorry, Luxuries Hotel de Glace, Glace, Glace? Though it's, a built, it's built from blocks of ice and snow, accommodations are warm and inviting. Some rooms even include a cozy fireplace. That's kind of cool, right? All aboard some of the coolest accommodations ever at Aspen Crossing in Mosley, Mas Alberta, with cabins made from converted cabooses housed on a set of railroad tracks. Though, though the exteriors are fun and rustic, the interiors are super modern and full of amenities. Again, take a picture of these guys or, or, or save them so you can share these on for a sample itineraries. Be on the lookout for spouting whales and 10,000-year-old icebergs from the historical Quirpen Lighthouse Inn set on Newfoundland's northern tip. This white and red 1922 lighthouse keeps watch over Iceberg Alley and 22 species that swim in the waters, including the largest population of humpbacks. There's nothing typical about the Fantasyland Hotel, starting with its location in the West Edmonton Mall, North America's largest shopping and entertainment complex. The unique retreat features 120 fantasy-themed rooms, from Hollywood glam to Old Western, with a ton to see and do right outside the room. How cool is that? So check that out. Google's your best friend, right? Pull up pictures, et cetera. Congratulations on completing your very first module of the Canada Specialist Program. You are now on your way to become an expert in things nice in Canada. Remember, with every module you complete, you unlock access to the same great content without the questions in retain. Let's discover Canada's vibrant cities next. Chapter completed, so you earned a... Um, a badge, guys. Okay, see so these you earn badges. Okay, so congratulations on that. So we're going to do vibrant cities. Okay, again, I know it's, you know, an hour long. So if you guys want to jump off, you're more than welcome. If you want to stay on board, we'll keep going and, and going, um, you know, through it. So again, stay plugged in, guys. Let's have some fun and learn about these amazing places. All right, so vibrant cities. And again, as you see, we need to go all the way through. So it's going to be a few days finishing this. All right. But again, you guys can do these all on your own also. OK, so just want to share that with you. So view from the Lookout Tower. So you have Vancouver, British Columbia. Vancouver is a cosmopolitan center embraced by nature where gleaming skyscrapers and trendy neighborhoods sit between beaches, towering trees and mountaintops. It's also a well-known foodie city. In fact, both Olive Magazine and Condé Nast Traveler have named it one of the best food cities in the world. Visitors need not rely on published uh, rankings, though, as the local appreciation for great dining is deliciously evident in the mouthwatering lines at food trucks and the enticing aromas waft, waft, wafting the kitchens on nearly every block. All right, so here's Stanley Park. We actually rode bikes around here when we went a couple of years ago. That was pretty cool. Iconic experiences in Vancouver. This 1,000 acre park provides green oasis among the urban buzz, brimming with year round activities for all ages along the waterfront and within the West Coast rainforest. Walking, jogging, cycling, the famous seawall is an absolute must do. At almost 14 miles long, the seawall is part of the longest uninterrupted waterfront path in the world. Along the path, visitors can soak in the beauty, be beautiful views of the English Bay, stop for photos for curious sea otters, harbor seals, or the beautiful Siwash Rock. 
and gaze in awe at the majestic mountain peaks that lie beyond Van Vancouver. Inland, the forest features miles and miles of hiking trails, local wildlife, awe-inspiring totem poles, as well as other important cultural historical landmarks from the indigenous peoples that first called this land home. There are many great dining options in the park, as well as Canada's largest aquarium. Vancouver Aquarium is home to over 50,000 creatures from friendly sea otters to bright jellyfish, as well as the country's only dedicated marine mammal uh, rescue facility. Granville Island, be sure to let your clients in on this secluded hotspot sitting beneath a major bridge near downtown Vancouver. Granville Island is a vibrant dining, shopping, and entertainment district full of artisans creating unique gifts, passionate foodies, sharing the fruits of their labor, and aspiring musicians perfecting their craft. Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. I think we went there also. That was pretty cool too. No visitor to Vancouver can miss the almost 460-foot Capilano Suspension Bridge which hangs almost 230 feet above the rushing Capilano River. But perhaps only the thrill seekers will cross it. And that's not the only adrenaline pumping adventure to be found at Capilano Suspension Bridge Park. There's the Cliff Walk, a series of cliff side suspended and catalevered uh, walkways above the rainforest and treetops adventure. Seven bridges suspended by 250-year-old Douglas firs over 110 feet above the forest floor, too. And then Queen Elizabeth Park, highest point in Vancouver. Queen Elizabeth Park is a natural choice for a fantastic view of the city and the North Shore Mountains beyond. The park is adorned with scenic gardens uh, surrounding Bloedel Conser Conservatory, which boasts a colorful array of flowers, trees, birds, and sculptures. All right, which statement best describe experiences found in Vancouver? Check all that apply. Okay, foodie, the seawall, right? It's all of them. <laughs> all of them, all right, let's do all of them. That is correct, very good. All right, guys, all of them, first answer. All right, how about Victoria Inner Harbor? So British Columbia's capital city, Victoria, is a luring study of contrast. Some would describe it as quaint with its walkable downtown, horse-drawn carriages, glorious gardens, and classic architecture. But it's also quite cosmopolitan. Thanks to great um, shopping, dining, entertainment, what more? Victoria boasts a flair for adventure with multitude of outdoor activities close to the city, including whale, whale and wildlife watching. All right, look at the beautiful castle here. Wow. Iconic experiences in Victoria. Again, save these for, you know, uh, to be able to share. Okay. Sorry. All right. So the picturesque, bustling inner harbor is host to yachts, small cruise ships. Ferries ushering passengers to and from the city. Visitors can rent a kayak, sign up for a whale watching tour, or hop in a float plane if they want to get out of the water. If they prefer land, it's a perfect spot to watch musicians, performers, and artists while strolling along the picturesque waterfront. You have Bouchard Gardens, 55 acre site features world-renowned floral displays but that's just the beginning the bouchard gardens is also an arts and entertainment venue home to fine dining opportunities complete with local ingredients and wines as well as saturday night fireworks in the summer and christmas lighting and an outdoor ice rink in the winter visitors can take an eco-friendly boat tour around the gardens or stay on land and check out the beautiful bronze and granite dragon fountain gifted by the People's Republic of China in the city of Suzhou. You have the Royal BC Museum. The natural and, and human history of British Columbia is permanently on display at the Royal BC Museum in Victoria, where visitors can walk through Victoria in the 1920s, see a woolly mammoth in its habitat, and explore their exceptional ind indigenous collections, exhibitions, and events, all under one roof. 
The museum strives to not only display its collection of artifacts and items, all 7 million of them, but also to immerse guests in a realistic setting. Uh, Craig Darock, Darock Castle, for, formidable Scottish baronial mansion built during the reign of Queen Victoria, standing as a true testament to Victorian architecture. This massive floor, uh, four floor home includes an 87 step oak staircase, 32 stained glass windows, and an impressive collection of period furniture. Visitors can also take a self-guided tour to walk back through time, learn the history of the home and its original residence. Um, and then Beacon Hill Park, located in downtown Victoria, at the very end of the Trans-Canada Highway. This expansive 200-acre park has something for everyone, including a popular petting zoo, beautiful gardens, green spaces for putting, lawn, bowling, uh, cricket, and other sports, plus a ton of opportunities to see fish, turtles, river otters, peacocks, and other animal um, life in the wild. Okay, Edmonton River um, Valley, El Edmonton, Alberta. Set in the prairie heartland of Albert, Alberta, Edmonton is Canada's northernmost metropolis and fastest growing capital city, a hub of cultural diversity, Edmonton pulses with excitement and innovation, and of course, sports fanat fanat what is that fanaticism? Um, whether they're watching world-renowned hockey teams face off, participating in North America's first biggest and wildest fringe theater festival, or trying a new craft brew in the Ice District, Edmontonians know how to have fun and share it with their visitors. So here's the West Ma Edmonton Mall. Iconic experiences, what to do in Edmonton. So you have North Saskatchewan River Valley, green space, and there's a North Saskatchewan River Valley. This vast collection of scenic parks, 22 times bigger than New York City's Central Park. Wow. Over 93 miles of trails, pathways, golf courses connect 20 parks where locals and visitors picnic, bike, run, kayak, canoe, stand up paddleboard, take a paddle boat or Segway, and in winter, snowshoe and ski, both cross country and downhill. You have the Westmont Edmonton Mall, nearly 122 acres, um, 500,000 square miles um, mall is no surprise the largest in North America with over 800 stores, 100 dining venues, a massive indoor wave pool with 17 water slides and a lake amusement park and ice skating rink. There are also two hotels, including one called Fantasy Land in this colossal shopping mecca, which spans more than 48 city blocks. Wow, huge, right? Elk Island National Park, Canada's largest fully enclosed park located just east of the city is a refuge for moose, elk, lynx, black bears, gray wolves, 250 species of birds and herds of plains, bison imported from Montana and rescued from extinction. Come sundown, it's a perfect quiet place to stargaze and for visitors lucky enough to visit between September to April, witness the incredible northern lights. Alberta legislature set atop the banks of North Saskatchewan River, which runs through the center of Edmonton, the Alberta legislature is a marvel of marble pillars and carved oak. Visitors can take a free guided tour offered hourly and learn about the famous five who fought for women's rights to vote, as well as the fascinating stories behind the portraits and magnificent art. And make sure your clients find the magic spot on the fifth floor where they can astonishly hear the rushing fountain from three floors below. Okay little secret thing there. The Art Gallery of Alberta, striking architectural landmark, remin reminiscence of the Bellas Guggenheim in New York. Downtown Edmonton's Art Gallery of Alberta is one of the province's prominent cultural venues. 6,000 paintings, sculptures, and installations on display at this premier venue include historical and contemporary international and Canadian works. So the massive West Edmonton Mall in North of North Shopping, how many city blocks? That was 48, right? Correct. I remember that one. 
All right, 48 guys, you just click on it and put the answer in. All right, Calgary nestled in the eastern foothills of the Canadian Rockies. Calgary possesses a frontier attitude with a hefty dose of creativity and swagger. This electric and eclectic energy is inst instantly felt in its historic neighborhoods, contemporary art centers, beloved music districts, and modern architecture. The flavors of the city are also diverse and appealing like flapper pie, a prairie classic, chips and curry, and of course the famed Alberta steak. Whichever taste draws visitors in, they'll find the perfect blend of old and new cosmopolitan and country. So here's Heritage Park and then the Calgary. So I things to do in Calgary. Uh, you have Calgary Tower, one of the highest viewpoints in Calgary. The tower treats visitors to 360 degree panoramic view of the city from an observation desk that, oh, that's over 625 feet tall. Admission includes an informative auto, audio guide and there's a restaurant and lounge on top offering edible treats with the skyline as the backdrop. Olympic Plaza created as a venue for the medal ceremonies at the 1988 Winter Olympic Games. Olympic Plaza is an inviting four acre, 16,000 square mile urban park located just east of downtown Calgary. With the famous five monument, large seating areas, reflecting pond of waterfalls, popular lunch spot and venue for outdoor entertainment in winter. It's home to a large public ice skating rink. Calgary Stampede, self-described as the greatest outdoor show on earth. Calgary Stampede is one of the world's largest rodeos held for 10 days every July since 1886. Wow. Popular event um, features the thrilling rodeo contest, concerts, parades, and livestock competitions, which pay homage to the cowboy culture that still runs strong throughout the province. Heritage Park Historical Village. Fewer than five miles southwest of downtown Calgary, Heritage Park Historical Village takes visitors on a journey into Western Canada's past. One of the most visited museums in the country, the park retraces the history of the province of Alberta between the mid 19th and mid 20th centuries. And then the Alberta beef. Alberta is often referred to as cattle country and Calgary leads the herd with the nickname Cowtown. The nationally prized high quality beef produced here can be savored throughout Calgary at mouthwatering restaurants like Legendary, Caesar's Steak House and Lounge and Vintage Chop House and Tavern. All right, oops, sorry. Perfect, okay. So this is um, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. All right, the meandering South Saskatchewan River winds its way through the center of Saskatoon, a welcoming prairie city with a small town vibe. With an active riverfront, farm to table cuisine, more than 40% of the nation's farmland is found in Saskatchewan. Bustling nightlife, over 200 parks, as well as diverse cultural institutions and museums, life in Saskatoon, Saskatoon um, is celebrated and savored in every way. Uh, Rimal Modern Museum. All right, things to do. River fun. The South Saskatchewan River weaves through, uh, right through the city center. And whether it's summer or winter, there are many ways to enjoy it. Powerboat and jet ski riders, kayakers, paddleboarders all take full advantage of the waterway as soon as the ice thaws. During the colder months, the riverbank trails are popular with fat bikers, cross-country skiers, and snowshoers. There are more chill ways to enjoy the river, too, like hopping aboard the Prairie Lily for a sightseeing cruise or lingering um, over brunch at River Landing. All right, events and festivals, over 65 annual events, 40 in the summer alone. No shortage of ways to celebrate life, music, and culture in Saskatoon. Fireworks to jazz, Shakespeare to microbrews, visitors can share in the fun and connect with locals on a deeper level. A Wanuskuin Heritage Park, Canada's oldest evidence of human existence is found in Saskatoon at Wanuskuin Heritage Park. Located just 15 minutes outside the city, 
With artifacts dating back 6,400 years, visitors could walk in the footsteps of the people who came here to hunt bison, gather food and herbs, and escape the winter winds so long ago. Remo Modern Museum. Modern culture and art holds a premium spot in Saskatoon as well with the Remai Modern Museum, which boasts hosts the world's largest collection of Picasso lino cuts. The architecture of the building itself is a representative of Saskatchewan's prairie landscape, and with its waterfront location and river landing, the museum is both inspiring and reflective. And then you have the Bess. Delta Bessabro, Bessboro is one of the country's grand railway hotels built for Canadian National Railway in the early 1930s. Today, the Bess, as it's called by locals, not only an impressive place to stay, but also an attraction in its own right. Visitors and residents can soak up the summer sun on the patio and in the gardens overlooking the river, enjoy a delicious meal, and even participate in a festival like the popular Beer Wars um, co competition. So in which city would hungry visitors find dishes like flapper pie, chips and curry, and the famed Alberta steak? That's Saskatoon? Calgary. Calgary? Thank you. All right, perfect. Everybody get that? All right, video. The wildlife, the scenery, I mean, they all want to see the Rocky Mountains um, because it's, it's just iconic scenery. Um, definitely the wildlife, you know, everyone wants to see the, the grizzly bears and the brown bears. Um, the, the history, especially if you're heading across to the, um, across to kind of Ottawa, it's got that beautiful European feel to it. Um, there's parts of Canada that I've become aware of since doing the training that I really want to encourage more of my customers to more or more of my clients to discover, which is the Yukon, which is very, very high on my bucket list. Um, and then Churchill, um, especially to see the polar bears, and then also heading out to kind of Labrador. And um, so those areas are kind of off the beaten track that I think Australians would love them if they knew about them. All right. Did I click out it again? Gosh darn it. I'm sorry, guys. The wildlife, the scenery, I mean, they all want to see the Rocky Mountains um, because it's, it's just iconic scenery. Um, definitely the wildlife, you know, everyone wants to see the, the grizzly bears and the brown bears. Um, the, the history, especially if you're heading across to the, um, across to kind of Ottawa. It's got that beautiful European feel to it. Um, there's parts of Canada that I've become aware of since doing the training that I really want to encourage more of my customers to more or more of my clients to discover, which is the Yukon, which is very, very high on my bucket list. Um, and then Churchill, um, especially to see the polar bears and then also heading out to kind of Labrador and um, so those areas are kind of off the beaten track that I think Australians would love them if they thank you sorry I didn't see that <laughs> all right perfect Winnipeg Manitoba all right set in the vast expanse of prairie land in the center of the country Winnipeg is a is an historic railway hub serving as a gateway between East and West. Known for its friendly and welcoming spirit, Winnipeg is a diverse multicultural city as illustrated by the enticing variety of architecture, neighborhood communities, and art institutions. A vibrant indigenous culture enriches the city with the world's largest collection of contemporary intuit art at the Winnipeg Art Gallery. Royal Canadian Mint, look at that. Okay, things to do in Winnipeg. 
Canadian Museum for Human Rights, stunning and impressive Canadian Museum for Human Rights building dominates the Winnipeg skyline, shining like a beacon across the city. This groundbreaking museum offers an immersive and unforgettable experience with 11 powerful, interactive, and awe-inspiring ex ex exhibits, which are viewed gradually while climbing to the uh, museum's pinnacle, the Tower of Hope. You have the Royal Canadian Mint. A trip to the Mint is worth every penny. Housed in one of the Winnipeg's most beautiful buildings, its reflective glassy um, exterior is a stunning sight at sunset, set aglow by the orange prairie sky on the inside. We'll have visitors take guided tours where they can hold a $600,000 gold bar, ogle over Olympic gold medals made for Vancouver 2010, and watch coins being produced for over 70 different countries. Journey to Churchill exhibit. This Assiniboine Park Zoo is home to the award-winning Journey to Churchill exhibit, whose main attraction is the beloved polar bear. Visitors can watch the bears dive, swim, and frolic overhead through the exhibit's unique glass dome. Muscogean, um, Arctic fox, and other northern species are also part of the show, which is the most comprehensive northern species exhibit of its kind in the world. The Exchange District National Historic, Historic Site, one of Canada's architectural marvels, this 20-block district boasts North America's most extensive and beautiful turn of the, 12th, turn of the 20th century building. The charming streets are lined with some of the city's trendiest, tasty spots, including small plate restaurants and bistros, up and coming and established galleries, vintage and antique shops, and some of Winnipeg's best cafes and coffee shops. And then you have the Forks, across 54 beautiful acres nestled at the junction of the Red and Assiniboine Rivers lies the Forks, bustling site featuring a central market, exceptional dining and accommodations, vast tree-lined paths along the riverbank, a world-class state skate park, a children's play area, a water park, and in the winter, one of the world's largest or longest skating rinks. The Forks connects the downtown core and the trendy St. Boniface district, and its chic restaurants, cafes, galleries, and distinctive French flair. Toronto, okay. Trendsetting Toronto is not only Canada's largest city, but also boasts one of the world's longest urban waterfronts with nearly 30 miles of shoreline stretching along the northwestern edge of Lake Ontario. Toronto has everything one would expect from a modern city, abundant and diverse accommodations, world-class shopping and dining, vibrant museums and galleries, thrilling sports and entertainment, endless recreational activities, you name it, Toronto's got it. St. Lawrence Market here. So things to do in Toronto, Lake Ontario. Can't talk about Toronto without mentioning all about all the things there are to see and do in Lake Ontario. This massive body of water seems more like an ocean than a lake and offers boundless opportunities for fun and action along its shores. There are art galleries, concert venues, incredible restaurants, expansive patios, places to swim like the popular Woodbine Beach, even a BMX bike park. Head offshore and take a sunset dinner cruise, sail on a 19th century schooner ship, windsurf, kite surf, canoe, or kayak. You have St. Lawrence Market. One of the city's best foodie destinations is found in Old Town. St. Lawrence Market has ex ex existed in some form since 1803, and it was recently named Best in the World by National Geographic magazine. It's a feast for the senses and row after row of fresh produce and um, cheese, as well as colorful uh, wares of local artisans selling souvenirs, clothing, jewelry, and more. The Entertainment District, if your clients are looking for performing arts, sports, major attractions, fantastic fine dining, Toronto Entertainment District is the aptly named place to be. The centerpiece of the district is the unmissable CN Tower, Canada's most recognizable and celebrated icon. So is that that right there? Okay. Um, defining the Toronto skyline at a staggering 1,815 feet, five inches, spectacular views are inevitable with floor to ceiling panoramic window walls, the famous 
world famous glass floor and glass fronted elevators with glass floor panels. Plus for the not faint of art, there's the edge walk, world's highest hands-free external walk that's about 160 stories above ground. Let's do it guys, right? Also lighting up the entertainment district are the Royal Alexandra, the Princess of Wales theaters, Ripley's Aquarium of Canada and the Rogers Center, home of the Toronto Blue Jays, the only major um, league baseball team with the host city outside the United States. And then Ontario Place, former theme park, Ontario Place is now a massive recreation and entertainment venue located on three artificially landscaped islands in Lake Ontario, just offshore from the city. Visitors will find boat and jet ski rentals, Segway tours, skateway park, skate park, volleyball, basketball, art installations, hiking and biking trails, fire pits, food trucks, restaurants, and more. There's always a festival, live music, or community event on the schedule. The foodie destination in Old Town Toronto has been inducing cravings since 1803, was recently named Best Food Market in the World by National Ge Geographic. What is it called? The St. Lawrence Market. Very Sorry. good. Very good, guys. That is correct. All right, Ridu Canal National Historical Site. Wow, isn't that beautiful? Ottawa is the nation's political capital, but it's also a cultural capital full of history, art, national events, landmarks, and an incredible culinary scene. The impressive Parliament Hill, the seat of our government, overlooks the Ottawa River towards Quebec on the other side. Downtown Ottawa is also known, um, is also home to Rideau, Rideau Canal, hope that's right, UNESCO World Heritage Site as well as a handful of lively neighborhoods that beckon with craft breweries, cafes, galleries, and boutique shipping. The city hosts a ton of annual festivals like Winterlude, huge outdoor fest every February, celebrating can Canadian snowy climate and culture with ice skating, hockey tournaments, ice sculpture competitions, and more. You have the Canadian War Museum here. Things to do in Ottawa, Parliament Hill. Visit to Parliament Hill begins outside with a 30 minute sound and light show. It projects a beautiful, engaging story onto the Parliament buildings themselves. It's a perfect introduction before heading up into the historic Peace Tower for a 360 de degree view of the city, watching the changing of the guard and taking a building tour. Canadian War Museum, sitting on the shore of the Ottawa River. The Canadian War Museum's distinctive Building is largely flat, but shoots up 82 feet into the air along one side, like a waving hand calling people over. Once inside, visitors will find exhibitions that cover Canada's involvement in conflicts throughout history, including a vast collection of tanks, military vehicles, and guns using, um, used on the battlefield. Rideau Canal. No matter what time of year, Rideau Canal is worth a visit, but in the winter, it's especially fun as it becomes the world's largest natural frozen skating rink at almost five miles long. In the summer, the canal is a hot spot for paddling a canoe or taking a scenic boat cruise or simply strolling along its banks soaking in the views. Byward Market. No visit to Ottawa is complete without spending some time in the Byward Market neighborhood, which has been food hub for nearly two centuries. Farmers and craft merchants have sold their food and creative uh, wares here since 1826, and um, great restaurants have naturally also come to call the surrounding neighborhood home. And then art and nature, cultures, um, culture vultures won't want to miss the National Gallery of Ca Canada with nearly 40,000 artists, works covering everything from Inuit uh, sculpture to the very latest in contemporary art. Nature lovers will find their oasis at the Canadian Museum of Nature, from fossils to aquatic life, birds, bugs, and more. This engaging museum will satisfy their curiosity about nature and its inhabitants. And then we have Montreal. Vibrant, char charismatic, and welcoming city provides a striking contrast between old and new, traditional and modern, among centuries old, Landmarks run um, a contemporary creative vibe that generates an enticing culture 
of trendsetting cuisine, music, design, and art. From fine dining to festivals to fashion, this sophisticated French-Canadian city is a masterpiece waiting to be explored. Here's the view from Mount Royal. All right, things to do in Montreal. Old Montreal is aptly named since it contains the site where Montreal was first established in 1642, but that's where the nod to history stops. Today, this neighborhood is buzzing with life and energy, lined in trendy fashion boutiques, cafes, and top-rated restaurants, plus a thriving waterfront area to walk, bike, and boat along the beautiful St. Lawrence River. Old Montreal is a year-round draw, too. In late January, thousands of people don snowsuits and fill the harbor for Igloo Fest, an outdoor electronic music festival. That sounds like fun, huh, guys? All right. Dominating the skyline of Old Port neighborhood in, is the Notre Dame Bas Basilica of Montreal. Completed in 1829, it's the first Gothic revival style church built in Canada and the stained glass windows and profound religious paintings leave many visitors in awe. Admission to the Notre Dame Basilica includes a 20 minute guided tour that introduces the history and architecture and art of this impressive building. You have Mount Royal, um, not many cities, oops, not many cities um, have a mountain as their centerpiece, but Mount Royal does indeed sprout skyward from downtown Montreal. Much of the mountain um, is located within a large park of the same name and its hub of outdoor activity for locals and visitors alike. A climb to the lookout point on the, at the top rewards with panoramic views of the entire city and a Sunday visit means a taste of one of Mount Royal's biggest draws, Tam Tams. Weekly gatherings of drummers, dancers, food vendors, and more. You have St. Joseph's Oratory of Mount Royal. Visit to Mount Royal is not complete without stopping at the impressive St. Joseph's Oratory of Mount Royal, the largest church in Canada. At 318 feet, the massive dome of the Oratory Basilica is the second highest in the world behind only St. Peter's Basilica in Rome. Visitors can take a tour and visit the small original chapel, as well as the Basilica, the gardens, and the museum. And then Montreal Museum of Fine Arts, founded in 1860. The Museum of Fine Arts is the most visited art museum in Canada, attracting over 1 million art lovers every year to the 41,000 works in the collection. And it's art museum in the broadest sense of the world as tradition, fine arts, mu um, music, film, fashion, and design all have a place inside the walls. All right, guys, almost done. Where in Montreal would visitors experience Tam Tams, weekly gatherings of drummers, dancers, and food vendors? Mount Royal. Mount Royal, all right. There we go, there we go, that is correct, yay. All right, Quebec City, Quebec. All right, steep in French culture and history, Quebec City located about two and a half um, hours east of Montreal following the St. Lawrence River. It is the only fortified city north of Mexico from the cobblestone streets of its charming historic district, a UNESCO World Heritage Site of antique churches, boutique shops, acclaimed restaurants, to its thriving indigenous culture and surrounding natural attractions like the Montmorency Falls, the capital of Quebec province, is a must-see on every French-Canadian itinerary. And here you have it. So different things to see in Quebec. Old Quebec is best visited on foot. Map out a walking tour for your clients in and among the fortified walls and rampart gates, highlighting these must-see spots. Citadel de Quebec. At the top of the famous Cap Diamant, lies the biggest um, British fortress in North America, built by the British between 1820 and 1850 to defend the city. The Citadel is a remarkable military heritage site and home to the Musée Royal 22 Regiment, where visitors can learn all about the history of the regiment and the fortress. Chateau Frontenac, Quebec City's most famous landmark, also the most photographed hotel in the world, and is no surprise why due to its impressive statue and old world architecture, whether you booked clients a stay at the Chateau or they simply pop in for a quick tour or cocktail, this beautiful property is worth a visit. Dufferin Terrace, lying at the base of the Chateau Frontenac, 
provides magnificent views of St. Francis River and its popular venue uh, for live entertainment in the summer and a toboggan run in the winter. Underneath this iconic promenade lie the remains of the historic St. Louis forts and chateau. And then you have um, Petit Champlain. Champlain. From the Dufferin Terrace, it's a short walk down to Petit Champlain, but riding the fun funicular, an electric cableway established in 1879, memorable event in and of itself. Once in the lower town, visitors will be charmed by an array of local shops, quaint bistros, and cobblestone, pedestrian avenues, um, known for its con concentration of art galleries and fine dining, Petit Champlain is a fairy tale sort of place, offering endless photo ops. And then Place Royale, historic gem in the where is where Quebec City was officially founded in 1608. Buildings that combine French and British influences, oldest stone church in North America. The square has a charm all its own. Perfectly restored houses that surround Place Royale have become restaurants and terraces and shops that sell artisan crafts and wares. Then you have the boardwalk along Halifax, Nova Scotia. Halifax isn't really a single city destination. It's a collection of communities and cultures stretching along the Atlantic shoreline from the picturesque Peggy's uh, Cove coastal region to bustling downtown Halifax and up along the pristine, oops, sorry, um, eastern shore, salty, uh, oops, salty sea breezes, iconic lighthouses, live music, and lobster rolls are just part of the vibrant East Coast culture found in Nova Scotia capital. So there's Peggy's Cove. How cute is that, huh? All right, the things to do. One of the best ways to experience this historic part, port city is strolling along the downtown waterfront. The bustling harbor provides beautiful sea views, of course, but also a wealth of things to do like kayaking, paddleboarding, renting a bike, or segue to cruise around this, the area, or hopping aboard a whale watching cruise. Among the many other attractions located at the waterfront is Pier 21, a national historic site that was the gateway to Canada for 1 million immigrants between 1928 and 1971. Today, it's home to the Canadian Museum of Immigration, Atlantic Canada's only national museum where visitors can explore the immigration experience. Next door, foodies will love the Halifax Seaport Farmer's Market, the oldest continuously operating farmer's market in North America. The most popular market in the region, it features 250 vendors selling local products and a rooftop patio overlooking the harbor. A short walk across the harbor and visitors will discover the Maritime Museum at the Atlantic, of the Atlantic. As Canada's oldest and largest maritime museum, it brings the sea indoors with a wonderful collection of small craft, model ships, photographs, and relics of maritime history. There's a lot more to see and do on the waterfront as well, including a casino, hotels, patio dining, beer garden, interactive sinus, science center, ferry rides to George's Island National Historic Site, just offshore from the harbor. Halifax Citadel National Historic Site, established in 1749, this historic British fort is one of Canada's most visited national historical sites. Visitors can witness live reenactments of the girl of bagpipes and the crack of rifles fill the air. Watch regiments carry out drills and certainly not miss the noon gun firing. It's Halifax tradition since 1856. This hugely popular 185 acre park is home to towering trees. This is sorry, Point Pleasant Park. Towering trees, 24 miles of winding footpaths, historic monuments and ruins, great views of the Halifax Harbor, the park also features a supervised beach for swimming and summer performances of Shakespeare by the Sea. All right. Which city's charming historic district is a UNESCO World Heritage site of antique churches, boutique shops, acclaimed restaurants? Quebec City. Quebec City. That is right. Very good, guys. All right, it looks like one more. Okay, St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. 
Most easterly location of North America comes with countless perks for visitors, including stunning ocean views, breaching whales, and other incredible wildlife, as well as encounters with icebergs. On land, there's rugged and refined St. John's, the creative capital of the province. The rainbow-colored buildings of downtown offer a peek into the city's vibrancy with rich history and tradition seamlessly merging into a new wave of art, architecture, music, and cuisine. And the pot at the end of the rainbow shines even brighter with the legendary warmth and hospitality of Newfoundlanders. All right, things to do. So you have Signal Hill here. Um, St. John's is an urban ba base camp for a host of natural adventures. The world's largest population of feeding humpback whales is found here, migrating from the Caribbean. They spend April to October in the waters of Newfoundland, Newfoundland, and in June and July, they can often be seen breaching, jumping out of the water, crashing into the waves. St. John's is a major destination for bird, bird watching over 350 species of birds, calling this area home including the pro provincial bird, the ever charming puffin. And its far easterly perch in the Atlantic Ocean, the St. John's area is one of the best places in the world to view icebergs in all their majesty. On a clear day, these more than 10,000 year old giants are visible from many points along the Northern and Eastern coast. You have Cape Spear, while in St. John's, all visitors must make their way to the very edge of North America at the captivating Cape Spear Lighthouse, National Historic Site. This landmark 1836 lighthouse and fortress site is laced with trails, offering jaw-dropping panoramic views of the endless Atlantic Ocean. Signal Hill, one of St. John's most popular historic landmarks. Visitors can learn all about the Second World War and the first transatlantic wireless signal in 1901, the origin of the hill's name. Explore the stone, stone fortress Cabot Tower and take in the stunning views overlooking the Narrows, Fort Amherst, St. John's Harbor, and the colorful cityscape. At single, Signal Hill, there's always a rotating show of ships, whales, icebergs, and seabirds, depending on the time of the year. Pubs and pints. After a day of exploring nature, the vibrant neighborhoods of St. John's are a great place to unwind with toe tapping fiddles and mandol mandolins in one of the city's many live music venues. Generations of influence from Ireland just across the pond make St. John's no stranger to pubs, pints, and lots of fun sing alongs. Woo, great job. Yes, we ace vibrant cities. Next, we'll leave the cities for wide open spaces of our sprawling and beautiful landscape. Don't forget, you've been you've now unlocked the module so you can retain a quick reference guide without going through the test. All right, guys. So congratulations. You earned two badges today. We're 50% on our way to bronze. I appreciate you guys staying on board with me. Uh, we have a lot more, as you can see, but I'm going to end it for today only because I had just gotten off of a presentation and I have a lot to do here at the clinic right now because we're opening next Wednesday. But I promise you, we will definitely kick about three or four of these out next time. Again, you guys are welcome to do these all on your own. OK, so feel free. But why not join me next week, same time, same place, and let's go on to wide open spaces, history and culture, and then let's get into the food and drink, the indigenous tourism. And again, I appreciate you guys. Have a fun and safe weekend, guys. Um, tomorrow, I think we're doing Spain, is it? Are we doing Spain? Let me see what we're doing. Uh, tomorrow, so this is... Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so tomorrow is Saturday. Yes, we're doing Spain tomorrow. It is at 8 a.m. Pacific. Hopefully you guys can join me. The link is right there. It's under TBO Academy. I promise you it's not a long one. Again, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Yeah, go to the movies tomorrow, guys. $3 movie tickets. Um, Italy, um, we're doing um, this Sunday, we're finishing Peru. We're going to finish Italy the next Sunday. Sorry, because we had already had Peru scheduled. All right. So again, we will catch up. 
again, I appreciate you guys. I hope you have an amazing holiday weekend. If you miss my trainings, you can find them on my YouTube channel. All right, right here. I will be register putting it here. You're welcome. I hope you guys learned a lot. Um, you know, again, some things are really interesting. Some things are like, okay, but you have to get through it to get your certificate or to get the knowledge. So again, um, you know, let's learn together, stay plugged in. And again, have an amazing, amazing day. Exactly. Exactly, Amanda. Yeah. See all those beautiful places. Again, the Northern Lights, glamping, right? Um, the, the ice skating in the winter, the whales, everything, right? It's amazing country that we live in, guys. I We bought an RV to move out here to Nebraska. We're living in an RV now. Um, I still have my home in Vegas, but um, we're temporarily here for three months. So I thought, hey, we can take our RV, travel up to Seattle, go through, you know, cross country in, in um, Canada. And again, I can work from my RV part, guys. So definitely. Um, yeah, Chanel, um, who is it? Is it Central um, Century Theaters or something? Or is it all theaters? But they were offering on the 3rd of September, $3 movie day. Okay, so check it out, your local um, movie theaters. See if they're doing it. All right, see, again, you learn something new every day, right? Again, stay plugged in. Let's help each other grow. You're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. And um, you know, just stay plugged in. And, you know, uh, if we don't see you at the beach of the world, we'll see you at the bank. All right, guys. Thank you, Linda. Have an amazing day, guys. I'll go ahead and, and um, post, post this as soon as it downloads. Bye, guys.